Hello, my name is Jimmy and this is the 2021 Nissan Kicks. And it's one of the most affordable vehicles that you can purchase. And it's not too bad. Yes, it is one of the most affordable vehicles because a base Nissan Kicks in Canada here, it's about $20,000. This is the SR Premium, so it has all the bells and whistles, or all the bells and whistles you can get on a Kicks, and it's about $25,000. So yeah, reasonably priced, and there's actually quite a bit to love about this vehicle. As an automotive enthusiast, you might think I love high horsepower vehicles. I do, I, I definitely do. Uh, big four liter V8 AMG, love them. But this, this is what I live for because this is something I can actually afford. I'm not some big time YouTuber. This is, well, right up my alley. And there's so much to love about this. Let's talk looks. The looks isn't for everyone and I get that. But for 2021, they did update a few things. The front end, definitely newer. You got a deeper V-motion grille here. You got LED headlamps, and they're not only just low beam, they're also high beam. At least for the SR Premium, you don't get that on the base. And you got some LED fog lights down low as well. Not a bad front end. On the side down there, you can see the 17 inch wheels are a little bit small, but hey, it just means cheaper for tires. The side profile doesn't look too bad, especially with this floating roof design. But on the back end, that's when they put a little bit more work with the taillights. I love a good set of taillights that stretches the entire width of the vehicle. Sadly though, it does not because when it lights up, you can see it's only off to the side. So this is a lie, sad, but that's okay. You still get a little roof spoiler on top and a little bit of black accents on the bottom. It's not a bad looking vehicle, I don't think. But one of the best things about the kicks is just, well, what's under here? Because if I lift the gate open, of course, there's a manually operated gate here. 25 cubic feet. It's enormous. I'll show you a picture here of me going to Costco and I was able to put quite a bit underneath the tunnel cover of this vehicle. And if you need to stow something a little bit more, of course, you can fold the seats down. They're 60 40 split, so you can hold even more. There's some grocery hook hangers off to the side, but that's about it, and there's no, not really much else in terms of thrills, but I think that's completely fine. Let's go to the back seats. All right, the back seat of the Kicks. The front seat's already adjusted to me at 5'11", so me being back here, it's actually not too bad. So got good headroom, legroom is plentiful. For subcompact, this is actually quite spacious. And the back seats, they have a stadium seating, which means I sit higher than the front, so I still get a little bit of view and I can see what's in front of me. In terms of thrills, there's not too much. You do get these little USB plugs right down here, covered by these really flimsy plastic covers, but that's really it. You don't get an armrest and, well, cup holders, you have the ones that's in the door, and they're not that great. But what else do you really need in a vehicle like this? Not too much. But if you're interested, I have a video linked up here to show you exactly how child seats fit inside this vehicle. I have a Kleck Ling, as well as a Kleck Funf, which is a convertible, just to show you exactly how much space there is back here. In either case, let's go to the front seats. All right, the front seat of the Kicks. The front seats are definitely a lot more supportive. There's bolstering and it just feels a lot better up here. They're part of Nissan's zero gravity seats, which just means it kind of cradles you, I guess. So it's more comfortable and they're actually not too bad. All the adjustments are manual, which is to be expected at this price range. And there's no adjustable lumbar support, which is something I do miss. But what's in front of me is pretty nice. I got a flat bottom Nissan steering wheel here. Yes, there's contrast stitching on the side. It actually looks quite sporty. It's also heated. Behind that, a partial digital and analog cluster, which shows me everything I really need within that digital part. It's actually the same one that's in like the Nissan Leaf and it just works really, really well. There's the digital speedometer, there's a tack, 
it gives you everything that you really are hoping for. There's no heads up display, but that's completely fine. But on this, the SR Premium, I do have an eight inch infotainment system with Bose Audio. The audio is not too bad with the monitors that's built into the headrest. Sounds all right. There's built in Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. And that's even on the base model. The base model, you don't get this eight inch unit. You get a seven inch unit, which I think is fine. But this of course is a little bit nicer. Below that, I have my automatic climate control, which is actually quite nice and really easy to use. My heated seat buttons is right there as well. And I also have an updated center console here. The shifter is surrounded by this glossy black plastic, which honestly, I don't mind because anything to liven up this cabin is actually a good thing. And you actually have this really nice stitching that's off to the side here as well. The cup holders has also been redesigned. Instead of just molded plastic, well, you get this little flappy doodle thing in the center so you can hold bigger cups or smaller cups. It's actually not too bad. There is also an armrest, which is nice. I mean, the old one, you had an armrest as well, but it was attached to the driver's side like seat here. And it was really only for the driver to use. This, you can kind of share. And there's also a little cubby below, but the cubby is quite small. But overall, I mean, for $20,000, this isn't bad, or at least this $25,000, it's not bad. It's exactly what you expect. You get really cheap quality plastic on the side, but it is sculpted. It is not just like a flat piece. So at least it looks interesting. And there's some color contrasting right below just to liven up this cabin. And this SR Premium trim with the contrasting orange as in the steering wheel and right here in front of me, it's actually a really nice place to be in. But this probably isn't the trim that most people will buy. In any case, let's go for a drive just to see how it is overall. All right, on the road with the Nissan Kicks. I said, this is an economy car and it has an economy engine. A little 1.6 liter four cylinder making 125 horsepower and 115 pound feet of torque. That is not a lot. That equates to a zero to 60 time of just under 10 seconds. Yeah, definitely not quick, but I mean, for the city and driving around town, it's not too bad when you just depress the throttle. It does wake up and it does push you back into your seat, at least just a little bit and helps you accelerate. When you're already going highway speeds and you want to overtake someone, that's a different story. But for around town, I think it's more than adequate. The amount of power it has, is, it's good. And if you want a little bit more, there's actually a hidden sport mode, or at least a sport kind of transmission coding. It's a little button right on the bottom here of the shifter. And when you press it, there's a little S that shows on the cluster and it holds on the revs just a little bit. So it's a little bit higher on that rev range to get the most power out of that little 1.6. But it's not about power, is it? It's about economy. This is actually not too bad. I'll have the numbers pulled up on the screen here so you can see exactly how it fares. Driving around town, I barely used any fuel whatsoever. It's economical. It's exactly what you want in a vehicle like this. So personally, I think it's great. Sure, it's nowhere near fun to drive as some others. And I mean, it's not designed to be. It's pretty dead, honestly. <laughs> Steering feel is minimal, but the suspension itself, it soaks up enough of the bumps to make you feel like it actually has a decent ride quality. And around town with the potholes and everything, I would say it's not bad. It's more than acceptable for a vehicle at $20,000. I mean, if you think back, economy vehicles like back in the 90s were nowhere near this good. And you actually get a lot for your money here. Personally, I wouldn't get this exact model. This SR Premium comes with a lot of things that you really don't need, like these seats. Yeah, they're kind of this pleather. I'm sure you can just go with the cloth seats that you get in the middle range. And I think the middle range is, well, that's sweet spot. It gives you everything that you really want in a vehicle, including a lot of the driving safety features, but it doesn't come with some of the flash like LED headlamps and low beams. I mean, you can just put in some bulbs. It's not as good as these, I'm sure, but it's not half bad. And like I said, you really don't need these seats. 
And as for the stereo, yeah, on this SR Premium, I do get this Bose headphone thing. And it does make it a little bit better, but you can upgrade your speakers with aftermarket units as well. So there's always a solution. And I think that's really it. Let me pull over here to give my final thoughts on the 2021 Kicks. The updates are good. The styling definitely looks a little bit better than last year. And this cup holder, well, not cup holder, sorry, the armrest in the center does make driving experience a little bit better. That's really the only real upgrade to the 2021 model. If you can live without the armrest and you don't really care about the styling, you may be able to pick one up, use for cheaper. But I think most people that's going to be buying this, you're going to be financing it or leasing it. And if you are, lease rates on the kicks, at least right now, they're actually pretty good. So it might not make as much sense buying used as you might not be able to get that new car lease or finance rate. And I think that's really it. In terms of the closest competitors, there's the Hyundai Venue and the Toyota CHR. I think those two are the closest. The Kia Soul, similar. It's kind of like boxy, compact SUV, but the Soul definitely is a little bit larger and a little bit more thirsty as well, but also with a slightly bigger motor. So there's some trade-offs there. The Venue and this, it, it's basically on the same market. The Venue... There's something about the looks that I like. There's a little bit more charm there, I think, comparing to this. But this, you get the Nissan name. And for some, that may mean more than the Hyundai's, well, excellent warranty that they offer. In terms of the CHR, personally, I'm not a big fan of the CHR. It's styling over everything else. It's smaller on the inside. It just doesn't look that great on the inside with kind of how... It's styled overall, in my opinion, anyways. And the rear seats are very, very tight. So this, with the just the ample room that you get, I think it's a good buy. Yes, I'm not saying that this is a great car. There's cheap materials all over. Like, this literally is like cardboard with a bit of fabric taped onto it. That's what it looks like. But I think that's fine. For a $20,000 car, for someone that's looking for their first vehicle, or someone that's looking for a vehicle just to take them around town, to carry your family. This is a really, really good buy. In either case, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or anything like that, leave it in the comment section down below, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.